Welcome back to OmniFactory. Today I'm going to get started with something that's been irritating me for some time, just because I forgot to really automate it. Well, not forgot to, I was just too lazy to. This over here, we've got this advanced chemical reactor, which is combining sulfuric acid with some other ingredients. And it's combining it with polyethylene sheets and with copper foil. Now, um, in the system, something I haven't used yet so far is uh, robot arms. If I just get one of those made, I've already made one and right clicked it on this surface. And you'll see if I just right click it with a screwdriver, I'm able to set things up. Now, I'll just take the item filter out for a second because you don't get that by default. In here, I've set this as import. This is going to be the import side, i.e. stuff being input into this side. And I've set it to keep exact. There are a couple of other modes, but the keep exact one is basically fill it up to this amount is what you're basically saying. And uh, it normally says, you know, how many here, but you don't need to worry about that because when you put an item filter in, you can then set up exactly how many you want this to keep in stock. So just like in the AE2 system, you can just click 64 polyethylene sheets. And even if you click 16 of these, uh, I think we just have to shift right click. There we go. And you can increase this to the number you want. So I want to say keep a full stack of each of those things in stock, please. Uh, except it can't pull from anywhere right now. So you can easily add that. If you add an interface into this, it can't do anything just yet because it can't see anything. Now, if I put a storage bus on this interface, another A2 system could see everything inside this interface, but that's not true for other machines. For the machines, we've got to specify in here exactly what we want. So we're gonna tell the system to make um, basically 64 polyethylene sheets, and I'm gonna get 16 copper foil from here. Now it doesn't currently, or it doesn't have any copper foil at the moment, so I'm just gonna put that in the system. It should get dragged through here in a second or two. Uh, hopefully, um, copper foil. Where did that go? Oh, it got pulled into the machine. That's fine. Yep, so the machine immediately took it out of here. Now, this currently isn't capable of replenishing itself until we add a crafting card. Add that onto it. And now the system is going to be asking to be to make basically up to 16 copper foil. So if we go into the system, you'll see right now a request is being made for copper foil. And this system is automatically pulling those in and producing boards pretty much automatically. And it will do so until it runs out of sulfuric acid. There is no current uh, input for, I'm sort of running out for, of imports without actually moving this onto its own separate area for liquids. So yeah, because the power is on the back, the bottom is covered by another machine. And that's where the limit is because the top is covered by another machine and the, this side is the output. So uh, yeah, the other thing I could do there, I guess, is just immediately output back to this side, I think. And if I just then take this off, will that work? Um, will it output to the input side? Let's see. We just say output that. And I may need to just reconfigure this again. So let me just grab those out of the system. And do I need to then, yeah, there we go. So can I just right click this? Hmm, is there any way for me to do that? <laughs> Now that the robot arm is in there, that's going to be a bit annoying. Um, I want to be able to accept input from this side, even though that's now the output side. And it was the, um, yeah, uh, hmm. I wonder how you remove robot arms. I may need to set this up again. Hang on. So I went through and tried all of that. I reset it with the, uh, basically by using a crowbar. Hadn't made one before, so I made one of those. Tried it. Unfortunately, you can't actually auto import and export in the same robot arm, it looks like. The robot arm is set to import, and that's exactly what's happening right now. Uh, so it can't, can't dump stuff back into our system. That's annoying because I have to use up another side, and that, you know, that's just annoying. But uh, we'll have to cope with it. I'll have to rearrange things by just moving this basically out of a stack and into uh, its own block on the ground or something. Anyway, on with other stuff. Uh, the other one thing I wanted to get started with was just a fermenter. And I kind of like, well, advanced fermenter should do the job. Let's we'll get one of those being constructed. Because I've got a comment from last episode saying, and you know how I did canola? And uh, it's probably up here, canola. How much canola have we got? We've got uh, 190 buckets of the stuff. And I then use that canola over here in U to make glycerol and biodiesel, which we're going to be using to basically take the next step there. Uh, you can use glycerol if you remember. 
and that is well, it can go back into hydrogen and oxygen but that's not exactly what we want, actually want to do what we want to do is get its epi chlorohydrin which then gets used for uh, epoxy resin which we can use directly for um, circuit boards um, and that's something we'll come to next anyway uh, before we get to that point uh, there is a more efficient use of the canola oil someone did say there is another tier of canola oil so if you just go to canola and have a look here canola oil if we just use that straight away uh, we can use six buckets of methanol one bucket of canola so six and one to get one bucket of glycerol however if we first go into refined canola oil and we do exactly the same thing it's now less than a bucket three quarters of a bucket of canola oil and it is four and a half buckets of methanol so it's more efficient to do that by far and you still get the same amount of output so it's still pretty good either way and of course you can use methanol or ethanol uh, those are both fine so we just need a fermenter and that is being crafted by our system somewhere did i already have that in crafting uh machine casing machine hole that's my interface blocks hmm that was fine it was just the system getting seized on something i'd change the configuration of something so we can get this sorted over here uh, not far away the energetic alloy so we just use medium voltage and we have our did i need to put that back in there i did whoops uh crafting card there we go um yes uh where was i ah yes fermenter so we'll just put that there and then we should just be able to get a fluid import bus and a fluid export bus uh there's the export bus is that the canola oil it is because i've got the bucket available so that should be easy and then uh i'm going to have this selected at the top you can be the output and then we want the fluid input bus on top of here that will do and then we just configure this to canola canola should get fermented and it doesn't take very long at all to basically convert into refined canola oil and then that we're going to grab in the system to basically um what did, what's actually in that is that more canola it's more canola oil okay uh let's just or can I not put the epichlorohydrin? Is that uh, gas of some kind? It doesn't look like it, but I can't seem to pour it out. Okay, uh, I guess I'll put that there for now then. Uh, in fact, I'll just put it in the system. So let's just go and put this into the system. And let's get the refined canola oil, which should be around here somewhere. 0.6 buckets. I just need to get to one bucket for that. It shouldn't take very long at all. It just does 100 millibuckets at a time. So uh, it, although it doesn't take very long, we still have to process it to get to that so 0 0.9 and one hopefully one bucket one bucket there we go so let's just grab the refined and then we're going to switch the recipe for the uh for this with the refined version and now i have a new chemical reactor and we should be able to go over here yep this is uh this is hv so that's perfectly fine yep everything is connected so we can then use this to get our glycerol uh glycerol let's just see what the best sort of recipe is there for that so chemical reactor glycerol and nitration mixture that's one bucket one bucket yeah versus a bucket of hydrochloric and uh, in fact there's only one recipe we can actually use or at least with glycerol uh, so that is just one bucket of each so that's perfectly fine so you need a bucket of glycerol and a bucket of hydrochloric acid uh, so we can grab that from our main system i don't have a wireless fluid terminal is the wide wireless, wireless fluid terminal fluid no wireless um wireless crafting terminal is there a wireless fluid that's odd i would have thought that would be available anyway i guess um that's fine uh let's just get rid of both of these for a second and let's just grab uh what was it now we needed so I want glycerol it's green stuff yeah i want hydrochloric which is in here somewhere um there it is so that's that configured uh, let's get my staff of traveling uh so we're back here whoops only problem with staff of traveling you can't really see where you're going that easily anyway uh this just needs a fluid export bus which i've got and a capacity card which i've also got and then we just do this and this that will work so you are exporting hydrochloric uh, unfortunately the fluid export bus unlike say um 
uh, what was going to say, was it here? It was one of the actual other interface. I think maybe export bus. Uh, you can't set it to round robin mode. There is no tab over here, unless anyone knows if it needs another particular kind of thing. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to work. Anyway, it should actually start filling once it's got enough in there. And then that should start transforming over into water and... Um, water and uh, epichlorohydrin. Yep, because I can't remember that off the top of my head. So epichlorohydrin, we're just going to put straight back into the system. And then we can combine that with other stuff like silicon to make po <laughs> polysiloxane. But we don't want that. What we actually want is this recipe. We want bisphenol A and sodium hydroxide. We've already got sodium hydroxide. We've now got epichlorohydrin. Uh, or we want to go by naphtha and nitrogen dioxide. And I think I want to go this way because we know how to generate naphtha. So that is going to be my chosen route. And from epoxy resin, we can make epoxy resin circuit boards. I did mention at the end of the last episode that it needs like EV tier and crazy stuff. No, there is a tier before that. That is the epoxy circuit board. So epoxy circuit board. Here it is. It's the white one. And this just needs epoxy resin sheets. Epoxy resin sheets are just fluid solidified from epoxy resin. So that's going to be really easy to make once we get to the epoxy resin stage, which needs this couple of things. So I need naphtha, which we've already got in our system somewhere. And nitrogen dioxide, so we need to get that first. And that needs oxygen and nitrogen. Nitrogen we can centrifuge from air. Yeah, and air we can just collect, that's trivial. And then oxygen we can get also from air. Well, in fact, no, we can get both of them, yeah. They're probably in the wrong proportions, but... Yeah, they're probably in the wrong proportions, but uh, at least we can start that off just by getting an air collector and a centrifuge. Um, an air collector, centrifuge, and a chemical reactor. So I'm going to get those sorted, and then we'll hopefully... Oh, there we go. It's starting to make our first... Well, there should be water in here as well. Water and epichlorohydrin. So that can go straight back into our system with an import bus. Uh, fluid imports bus. And we're just going to configure it out on the right hand side. Where's my wrench? There it is. Uh, yep, that can be configured. Oh, I guess we can even... No, we can't do it, that, do it that way. I want to do it on this side, and then we'll just bring it back around and do that. So you can go there. Um, shouldn't need the automatic output, but we'll just put everything back into the system. Where is... Oh, am I out of cable? I'm out of cable. Go and make me some more cable, please. Yep, and that will work for perfectly fine. So I'm now going to go and set up the other thing, the thing that's going to generate us the nitrogen, oxygen, oxygen and nitrogen tetroxide, and we'll come back in a second for that. And our system's finished manufacturing all of those items, so we should now be able to get things sorted. We'll come over here and get it on the same column. I think I've made everything in HV tier, so we're going to be using a Advanced Air Collector 2, because that's HV. And I think it's HV anyway, we'll soon find out if it disappears. And this turbo centrifuge itself. So I just want to, uh, is there any more gold cable? Gold cable. I just want one more piece, I think. Oops, one more piece. And let's just pop up here. Yep. Yeah. So we can just put the uh, air collector on the top. And yeah, the turbo centrifuge below it. So air collector works fine. Turbo centrifuge can go below it. And you'd expect that to, well, I would expect it's automatically input downwards. Um, if, if I can't change this to down, I can't remember if I can or not. No, it doesn't like it. I almost remember why that is. Um, let's just, uh, can we do anything about this? I guess I can sort of wire this backwards. Let's just put that down here instead. Okay, and let's just get rid of you. Take a second or so to get rid of that. There we go. And we'll bring it out this this side. Will you now how put to the left? Left. There we go. Okay, so you are working perfectly fine. And you will be outputting different gases in a second. That should be nitrogen and oxygen. Yep. And then we are going to basically import those into the system. Did I make another import bus? I thought I'd requested one, but clearly not. So let's just get one of those. Oh, it needs more aluminium. I've clearly been using huge amounts of aluminium today, so I need to put another four stacks on to 
our machine over here. We'll just get them all done there. And in fact, I'll probably just get another four stacks as well. I should automatically just put them into this machine, I think, permanently rather than having to wait. So that's something I'll sort it of off camera. Regardless, this is starting to produce nitrogen and oxygen. Now that's going to be the wrong ratio to get started. And I'm going to, if I'm going to output to the system this way, then it'll be fine. It'll be stored in our system. However, we could just send it straight downwards for the moment. And I think we could get everything there. I think we need a circuit, first of all. A regular circuit. A, let's just change that to number one. And let's put that in here. And then if I then just tell this to output downwards for the moment. And set this to auto output. Are you going to auto output? Let's just set it. There we go. Not sure why that didn't work. Um, yep, chemical reactor. And it's got all that stuff already. And then we'll just give it number one. I think that's the actual resource we need. This should be nitrogen. Uh, uh, nitrogen dioxide. Yep, nitrogen dioxide. And again, we would feed that into the system. However, given that um, everything's going to go into the system from up here, then ooh, this is just a temporary thing. Uh, do we also have the naphtha yet? Um, is it in here already in the fermenter, distilleries, methanol? Uh, no, it's not in that one. It's in this one. So there's the sulfur, sulfuric area fuel, sulfuric light fuel, sulfuric naphtha. So naphtha should be popping out of here into our system. And uh, we should have it in there. So let's just go and see if it is in our system. Um, nap. Yes, it is. And we have 204 buckets of the stuff. So plenty to be getting on with. And then finally, we just need another chemical reactor. So let's order one and let's see if the system can actually make one. Uh, another HV tier one. It's probably going to object for... Yep. So I just need some tier three circuits. That's going to become less of a problem once we get to this... Uh, Less expensive version of tier three. It does take a little bit of effort to get there, but uh, it should be pretty good. So yeah, nitrogen dioxide, and you'll see over here the nitrogen's building up, and then what is going to happen is it's going to build up and build back here, and eventually everything's going to seize, which is why you probably want it into your system, or at least to have a secondary output that just voids it somehow, like a fluid, uh, a low priority insert filter on a fluid trash can something like um down here so you just have it being lower priority and if it can't fit it in this one then it will go down into the trash can uh i ooh, actually do i want nitrogen oxygen in the system or do i want a trash can i think i want a trash can so let's just basically make sure i collect all of that first of all and let's just take you back yep and a fluid trash can would be nice Fluid trash, and are you going to have... I'm going to need some iron plates, aren't I? Iron plates. We don't need enough of these for me to actually put it in a, as a recipe, but uh, we'll get those produced. And then I will just route them out of here into a trash can on the right-hand side here, a lower priority, and then otherwise straight downwards into uh, this, which will get, that get us just the nitrogen dioxide into our system. So we're not just building up nitrogen and oxygen. That's sort of the main thing that I'm... Uh, I'm hoping for. Are you really taking a while to craft these? It's queued behind. It's queued behind these circuits. Okay, we'll wait for a little while and I'll jump forwards. And here we go with final setup. We should have a chemical reactor two. There we go. And this can now just be set to dump upwards. Uh, wrench. You can go this way. Uh, yep, that way. And uh, we have a fluid input bus which can just go straight up and into our system with some cable and then we want an export bus as well so fluid export bus yep it's going to be crafted so then we just basically need to feed it into here and have it automatically process everything so we've got a bucket of naphtha a bucket of epichlorohydrin and a bucket of nitrogen dioxide and everything there should be fine are you going to make this uh your schedule will you stuck behind uh am i already making a fluid export bus I'm actually making two. Let me just cancel one of them. That's fine. And that should get this one done quicker. There's a fluid export bus. And our capacity card, because it's going to need three different things. One, two, and three. So that should start feeding all of those in there. And that should be pretty good. So yes, uh, uses. 
Let's just double check. I don't need any circuits or anything like that, do I? Nope, no circuits, just basically small amounts of each of them apart from that, though we need three buckets per. And we're going to get epoxy resin out of this. The epoxy resin is going to dump straight back into our system for us to use elsewhere. So the epoxy resin, actually, we don't even need to put it into the system. Um, that's a good point, actually, because we don't need this. Uh, we don't want the liquid. We actually just want a fluid... And then we can just use a regular import bus. Yeah, that will be a much better option. So I want the uh, epoxy resin. Oops. Epoxy. And epoxy resin. I want to put it in a fluid solidifier of the HV variety. Hopefully we've got one of those. And we just want it into sheets. So we're going to need a mold plate for epoxy resin sheets, which then get turned into basically um, epoxy circuit boards. So we need a mold plate and a fluid solidifier. Can our system already make a fluid solidifier that is HV tier? Yes, it can. It probably is going to be short on uh, some stainless steel, some yeah usual bits and pieces. Fine, I'll make those and then we should be able to finish off with getting those epoxy resin sheets, essentially. And there's the fluid solidifier which can output right now into epoxy resin sheets. Quite quickly, in fact. <laughs> Much quicker than I was expecting. And indeed, our system will be important, just not uh, as fast as it can actually make them. Anyway, that will run out over time. And of course, uh, the nitrogen dioxide that comes from here will really just depend on when this king produces oxygen. It's got a lower priority dump here, so it should never stop. But, uh, you know, we are on HV tier, so it is pretty fast. But um, yeah, that's that done. So from here, all you really need to do then is use those epoxy sheets. Epoxy sheets, you'll see there's 100 in the system already. Um, epoxy resin, resin sheet. There we go. And there's a fiber reinforced. That's the next tier up. We're not going to worry about that just yet. And in here, then, we want the chemical reactor. We combine that with copper foil and sulfuric acid, and we'll get epoxy circuit boards. So we could divert this from making the current tier to making the new one quite easily just by changing, well, basically making available other things in here. And uh, then you've got to change the... Um, What's we call the robot arm? So, yep, that's immediately available for production. And that will take you into what you can use with epoxy circuit boards for, which is tier two circuits. So you jump straight into tier two. There's no tier one going on here. Um, and we have a look just for the SMD ones rather than the other ones. So SMD needs fine red alloy wire, needs SMD circuits, basically capacitors, resistors, transistors, central processing unit, epoxy circuit boards, and you'll just get straight into tier two circuits and you get four for each one now if we had more <laughs> more um power we could get straight into eight per operation again with epoxy circuit boards but via system on a chip but system on a chip also has a problem in that that indeed requires um uh, doped wafers first of all but also if you have a look at the just sheer amount of power needed here we aren't there yet so we can't go straight to eight tier two circuits but each of these course the tier two circuits this is the the last tier two circuit available can be used for the next tier up to make tier three circuits and this is the third tier three circuit so you'll see again let's skip forwards do we have any options here i'm going to go for the one with smd components so we have ram small coils the ones we've just made or just about to make and everything else is pretty much the same there so it's quite kind of nice that we have these recipes and uh, that will that will help a great deal so i'm going to set up another chemical reactor with another robot arm i think and have everything set up exactly like this but we're going to put it into a cef entirely on its own so we can use all the sides to input sulfuric acid i don't have the same problem then and then once we're out of that old previous tier uh sorry well not the tier but you know the, the actual um what do you actually want to call that uh what is it actually called? Epoxy. Uh, it doesn't really say what it's called. It's just the fourth. So the fourth generation, if you like. So yeah, let's just call it generation. Yeah, once we're into the fourth generation, we can get rid of this third generation stuff. So in the meantime, I'm going to put down a CEF somewhere, probably get rid of some of this stuff, and then we'll start manufacturing uh, circuits. 
So finally, we should be able to grab a filter. I've put another robot arm on top, and we should be able to use that with a screwdriver just to set everything up again. In the top, import, keep exact, and we'll use the filter. And then we want to make sure we select copper foil and epoxy resin. And we'll basically tell this to, um, yeah, we'll tell it to try and supply 64. Whoops. Let's go back down to one. That should get us to 64 that way. Yeah, and everything else is pretty much exactly the same. So we're going to need an interface. I think there may be one in the process of being crafted. Looks like it is. Uh, yeah, it's just crafting some circuits. So that will work for that. And then the import bus can come off this side. Uh, we just need to select this as the output. There we go. Input bus can go there. So this is going to pull in our um, our circuit boards from the epoxy resin sheet. So you can get the idea. There's both the bucket we're going there. And then we also want an ME export bus of the fluid kind. And we're going to set that to sulfuric acid. Now, the system doesn't have any sulfuric acid right now, but we have it over here and here. We're never really exporting it into the system. So again, uh, this is extracting on green, always active. So if I just do something simple like, um, do I have a fluid tank? Yeah, I can get it from there. Green. So if I put down a fluid tank, that's going to just get sulfuric acid just by the fact that green's the default channel. But we'll make sure this is set to low priority anyway. So if it needs to go anywhere else, it will. And then we can just get another fluid import. Uh, import bus. We've already got one. Good. Fluid import bus and connect that up to the system. And that's going to start pulling in sulfuric acid, which should start pouring it back out here. And it's already done that, I think. Yep, because uh, it started processing. And then this will get us the epoxy circuit board, which should get pulled into the system anyway, automatically. We're just left with the interface, I think, to get that going. There's the interface. And we, as usual, need to basically get the system to supply these two things. So the epoxy circuit boards is one of them and uh, the copper foil is the other. So I'm going to just tell the system to actually make some copper foil. Um, let's just uh, should have a recipe for it. Let's make a couple of hundred copper foil and I'm just going to grab one for now and then we can fill that in later. Uh, you already set up is everything set up the import keep exact everything is fine it can pull in really quite quickly so we just need to put the interface down and then we probably need a crafting card in here why don't i have a capacity card uh oh i didn't need a capacity card there i actually need a crafting card so let's just tell it to make a card uh another one of those and then we're, in the meantime we'll just tell it to supply 32 epoxy sheets and copper foil you'll see it's already pulling in everything it needs there to start producing epoxy circuit boards. So epoxy circuit boards are done, which means effectively that we can get immediately to those uh, upgraded versions. So we just need a an assembler with 400 EU per tick. So we're going to have to think about that, whether that can be done with HV or not. I can't remember off the top of my head. It may just be over the top of HV. I'll try it anyway. I'll create another assembly machine. And uh, if that doesn't work, then I'll obviously I'll come back next episode and we'll go there. So that's in fact, I don't even have a, a HV assembly machine recipe yet. Uh, so I'm going to, need to make more patterns. Assembly machine. Assembling. Whoops. This thing. Assembly machine. HV. Uh, OK, hopefully that's tier four circuits. Oh, my. So that's going to. <laughs> That's going to uh, be a little bit uh, worrying, until, at least until we get to the fourth version, the fourth generation. But we'll be able to get that and start perhaps producing circuit boards next episode. So I hope you enjoyed this one. We've got a lot of stuff done just to get ourselves to epoxy circuit boards. But we've got a lot more fluids in the system now anyway. I've added more storage over here on the bottom on our ME drives. You'll see now we have basically seven drives and we can build more quite easily. And then we can going to fill out more and more ME drives as we actually need them. Out here, we are basically having a lot more fluids basically being moved around the system. And over time, this should tidy itself up quite nicely. Once you have enough stuff in there, you can set stock keeping systems to basically say produce each fluid until there is 100 buckets in the system. And at that point, you can shut the machine down and it will all, every, all the machines will just start up on demand to keep everything to with 100 buckets. Um, we're approaching that stage already, I think. So we're going to get to the point where I'm going to have a lot of the basic resources 
I'm probably going to standardize on HV and then start just producing a lot of these machines in HV and uh, we'll see what we need to do for those things. But that was in the upcoming episodes. First of all, next episode, we're going to get the circuit boards made and then uh, that should be nice and cheap. And then we'll get a stock keeping system to automatically keep them in stock. Hope you'll join me for that and hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, put comments down below as you normally do and tell me just how wrong I am. Um, but that, that's to be seen. And uh, thanks a lot for watching, as always.